collaboration with the Cyprus Mail. This is the Cyprus News Digest with Rosie Haralambos. This week we examine the outcry over the listed houses demolished in Old Nicosia by the church. We hear from the technical chamber. The first thing that should be done is to restore all these buildings at their initial state with uh, the initial the same materials, the same technique, the, the same way they were initially constructed. From Nicosia's mayor. To get an agreement that we need to rebuild the uh, four buildings that have been demolished. Number two, agree a timeline for them to be rebuilt. And number three, find a legal way to ensure that those timelines are met. And we get the legal viewpoint. The importance of this exercise is to stop all action on the building plot on the project and by doing so, force them to restore the four buildings. Only when the four buildings are restored should they be allowed to continue work on the church. There was outrage earlier this week after four listed houses were bulldozed to build a new cathedral in Nicosia's old city. The condemnations came from across the board. Joining us on the programme this week to talk about our architectural heritage and indeed what's done to protect it, not a lot it would seem, we're joined by Christos Christoloulou, who is the president of the Architects Association and also the treasurer of ETEC, which is the Cyprus Technical Chamber. Christos, I think I'm not underestimating this outrage that's been across the board after these beautiful old buildings in the heart of old Nicosia were bulldozed but it's come to my attention that since they were listed they should not have been bulldozed and I'm also under the impression that the agreement signed by the Nicosia municipality with the church to build this new cathedral part of that was that they would actually restore these old houses and they've gone and bulldozed them what do you make of all of this? Well as you mentioned before, I mean, uh, there is a b outrage uh, for, from everyone, especially the architectural uh, society, uh, because uh, when we demolish, when we bulldoze down uh, listed buildings, it's like we destroy our own culture, our own history, and uh, our, our own architectural uh, uh, civilization. Well, yes, as you mentioned, there was... Um, prerequisite to before building the cathedral to restore the listed buildings so the church instead of restoring them they just uh, decided to bulldoze them down to demolish them without notifying anyone without getting any permissions and uh, the worst of all this is an illegal action yeah, I want to talk about the whole legal situation here because we're so used, unfortunately, with listed buildings to fait accompli, usually over the weekend or at night time. Now, what is the comeback? I mean, what can be done? I know there's an added problem that has been done by the church and their legal position is somewhat strange, it seems to me, here in Cyprus. But is there any legal comeback if people bulldoze listed buildings? Okay, the, the law uh, requests uh, from the owners to restore the buildings to, the, to their initial estate. And also, if, uh, if, I'm, if I'm right, uh, there are also some fines that uh, should be imposed by, uh, by the court of law. But the first thing that should be done is to restore all these buildings at, the, at their initial state with uh, the initial the same materials, the same technique, the, the same way they were initially constructed. Yeah, most of these are mud brick buildings, but there are still mm. craftsmen on the island who can do that. What I can say is that the, the action that was taken by the church or by whoever, I don't know if, if the church knew about it, if it was a contractor by himself, if, if the architects, the engineers knew about 
uh, because it, it was an, an event that happened without uh, any prior uh, information and it was by accident that people saw that and they informed the media, informed the police and uh, this became uh, known. So in terms of actions, um, I would say that the police has to take over because this is a, a matter of illegal demolition and uh, on behalf of, of the municipality. Right. What is the tech take on all of this? Because as you just mentioned, architects are involved and, all right, the contractor, of course, but you don't make plans for a new cathedral and the surrounding area without people who are probably members of EDTEC or indeed of the Architects Association. So what's the position of those bodies about architects involved in things like this? It's one thing if ethically we are against or in favour of something or scientifically and it's another thing if it's illegal. So the architects and engineers involved in this project, as long as they follow all the legalities, all the instructions, permissions and what was allowed and not from the municipality permission, the planning uh, authorities, etc., then let's say we can't really criticize if, if whatever they did was in uh, their legal right. Now, in terms of the illegal part of it, which is demolishing these buildings, ETEC, the chamber, has a disciplinary board and, and I'm sure that uh, will follow this uh, procedure. I'm not saying that the engineers or the architects uh, knew about it, uh, so I cannot say if they're guilty or innocent, but uh, uh, if this was happened uh, with their knowledge or not. But, uh, what but the, the chamber will be looking into that. The, the chamber will be definitely looking into that. We have to follow ethical rules and uh, scientific rules you know, when we apply our uh, professions. So the engineers and the architects should follow these uh, guidelines and these uh, rules. So the chamber will look into it definitely. I'm not sure about the, the details of this whole, of, of this action and uh, talking about the demolition. I don't know who initiated it, who knew about it or who didn't, but it was an illegal action and uh, it's a shame. It's a shame for everyone involved. And from an architect's point of view, if the buildings have to be restored and looking at the state of them now, actually you have to rebuild... If you don't have the original plans, or indeed are there, presumably since they're listed buildings, somewhere in the town planning department they have the original plans so that they can be rebuilt the way they originally were? From what I know is that uh, the church submitted, the architects submitted drawings of how to restore these buildings. Initially, so probably there is already uh, ready-made architectural drawings, uh, structural drawings in restoring these uh, buildings. So there is probably a, a good bulk of information with photographs and drawings. So I think this is the good thing about it, that uh, probably there is uh, enough information for the people involved in the future to restore them. Well, let's certainly hope so, because what a shame. Yeah. There are so many beautiful old buildings in uh, the centre of Old Nicosia. And thank you very much for joining us. We'll follow this with interest. That is Christos Christodoulou from the Technical Chamber and the Architects Association. Keep up to date with events in Cyprus and around the world with the Cyprus News Digest. And continuing with that story about the demolished buildings, because the outcry has not died down, it's a great pleasure to welcome back to the programme our Mayor of Nicosia. I think I'm right in saying, Konstantinos Yorgadis, that it's actually you and your council who are going to be, in a sense, in charge of whatever sanctions are brought to bear on the Archbishopric. I feel the majority of the responsibility, although I don't know all legal statutes uh, rests with the municipality uh, to implement. Right, now you've been quoted in the press as saying that the Archbishop has said he will rebuild these buildings, but if I'm very frank with you, as I always am, Constantinos, how can you be sure he will actually do that once the church is finished? 
it would seem that if you rescinded the building permit for the cathedral until the completion of the complete rebuilding of these houses, then you could be very sure it would be done. Uh, um, yeah. First of all, it's very difficult to rescind the license for the uh, and to force people to stop working on the um, on the church part. Can I interrupt you there? Because my understanding is that part of the agreement that was signed when permission was given, planning permission for the cathedral, it was that these houses would be restored. So if Correct. they have Correct. not been restored, then Correct. surely you're in a position to say, well, you've reneged on our deal, so we rescind the planning permission until it's done. Correct. I, I, I agree with the logic. I'm just saying that it will take some time to implement that because it will eventually go to court. Uh, and I don't think it uh, suits the time scales that we have in mind. Um, or what we are uh, thinking uh, amongst various other options uh, is to see, um, is first of all, to get a, a written agreement, which is uh, a great, um, I, 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 it's a good progress to agree on a timeline of rebuilding these houses and then find a legal way to uh, ensure that these timelines are kept. I, uh, this is exactly what we will discuss tomorrow during the Municipal Council meeting. The first step, in my opinion, is to get an agreement that we need to rebuild the uh, four buildings that have been demolished. Number two, agree a timeline for them to be rebuilt. And number three, find a legal uh, uh, way to ensure that those timelines are met. But since they didn't stick to the original agreement that was part of the planning permission, what on earth makes you think that they will stick to another agreement? Uh, because of the insurances that uh, we will come up with, assuming that is the way we go. In the meantime, what's to happen to these properties? Well, that's part of the, uh, what needs to be done. Uh, first of all, uh, one of the things that we are, uh, I mean, uh, the number, the priority is to clean up the area of the demolished houses and put in a safe place all the material that has, uh, that has uh, fallen due to the demolition. The material is valuable because the idea is to rebuild the certain uh, houses as they were. So it's very important that we keep and we safeguard the material that is lying around. So that would be number one. When you one. say we, are you talking about the municipality? We have offered our help as well, yes. Once again, I think taxpayers in Nicosia might say this is the responsibility of the Archbishop, whose contractor did this agree, demolition. I, so why should everybody else bail him out? Uh, we're not bailing anyone out, but I think it's so. Uh, I think it's extremely, extremely important that we safeguard the material if we want to be. Uh, if we want to discuss uh, seriously the eventual recon uh, rebuilding of the actual houses. Also, in regards to uh, the Atiridea. Listed uh, buildings. List, uh, thank you. Uh, in regards to listed buildings, uh, we have uh, been um, rebuilding and uh, uh, fixing uh, listed buildings in various places in the world city uh, and in other centers like uh, McLean, Palurio, the Saura, Yumlugide. So, in regards to listed buildings, there are many. Uh, the, the municipality and the government itself uh, promotes, pro uh, helps economically in various ways. Yes, but the responsibility... Not of the attribution, that's what I was trying to say. Fair enough, but the responsibility basically for all these buildings lies with their owners. Owner. Which brings us to who owns these four buildings, because yeah, research has come to light that they were actually given as an endowment back, I think, in the 1920s to 
help people and pupils in need at the Pan Cyprian Gymnasium. So there's a connection there, and I think the schools board of Nicosia is somehow involved, but I haven't had time to look that up, and that the archbishop was simply sitting on this committee. So if that's the case, they are not technically owned by the archbishopric. That, uh, that would be, um, I, don't, I don't have an answer for that because I haven't checked that out, but... Um our response would be similar. I mean, they are listed buildings. Uh, as we help uh, in preserving listed buildings of anybody else, person or organization in various places uh, in Nicosia and in the world city, uh, I mean, look what we've done at Termos Street or uh, at the end of Tricupiores Hill or at the Dimachia Square uh, or in Kemakli, anywhere, we, are, we, we do help uh, and we to offer economic and other uh, incentives for people to preserve listed buildings. So in this case, we would also have help if somebody asked us. So I think us uh, helping right now in preserving the material that, that is a product of the demolition, I think is uh, it's for a good cause and we should do it immediately so that the material is not lost. Uh, so eventually the buildings are rebuilt. Right, fair enough. What is the penalty? I live in a listed building, and if I brought the bulldozers in overnight and knocked it down, what would I be fined? Uh, well, I don't know if you would... Uh, if, uh, it, it would depend. There is... Uh, you are saying that you demolished it without a license. Mm -hmm. Because you could ask for a license, and if the reasons were serious enough... Uh, somebody would probably allow you to demolish. Yes, but if if I did uh, it without penalty. getting that license, what's the penalty? It depends who gave the uh, who would authorize the demolition. Gonzalinos, so. you've misunderstood me. I live in a listed building, and if for whatever reason I decided that I wanted to knock it down, and I didn't tell anybody, I didn't ask for any permissions, what would be the penalty imposed upon me? I don't know that. And who would be responsible for taking me to court? Is that the town planning department or the local municipality? Or who else? I think both. Are, in theory, they should. But also the, mun the municipality. So you've got a big job on your hands and an awful lot of people very, very angry by what's happened. How soon will you know when the timeline for repairing these houses is going to be announced so that people will be watching to see that it's done? I think uh, it will be quite soon. Uh, I think everybody wants uh, to put fixed dates on paper, find a way, because as I said, that's number two. And number one is to agree, and we have agreed that the houses need to be rebuilt, which is positive. Number two is agree on a timeline. And number three is find a way to uh, make sure that the timelines are kept. Uh, so soon we will be able to uh, announce our decision. We'll look forward to hearing what that is. Konstantinos Jordkadzis, Mayor of Nicosia, thank, thank you. you very much for joining me. Well, following on from those conversations about the demolished houses, I invited Nicosia lawyer Achilleas Dimitriadis to inform us a little bit more about the legal situation in cases like this. Achilleas, thanks very much for joining us. First and foremost, I suppose the question is, can anybody 
impose sanctions on the church if it is found that it was on their orders that these demolitions took place? Well, under the Constitution in relation to property, Article 23, there are certain restrictions in being able to bring an action against the church. So I suppose if those were applied, then directly in relation to the property, one cannot initiate any litigation. But I think there are roundabout ways one can achieve this. For example, if the municipality were to apply to the court to get an injunction for the contractor to stop doing work, that would do the job. So there are ways of moving ahead and blocking this because there is a permit. The terms of this permit, as I understand, are that there was going to be a development of the four listed buildings that were knocked down. Obviously, the terms of the permit are not complied with, and therefore action must be taken. Well, I put exactly that point to the mayor, and he said that they were going to hold a meeting, and because court cases took so long and so on, he preferred the option of signing a new agreement with the archbishopric, the church or whatever, that would put in writing that they were going to restore the buildings that had been knocked down, and that there would be a legally mandated timeline for that. He didn't say when it would be, but he seemed to think that despite the fact that the church had reneged and he did confirm that they did sign that memorandum saying that those houses would be restored, they reneged on that and he doesn't seem to think that that is enough to stop the construction of the cathedral until those terms are complied with. Well, I, I don't have the documents with me, and I'm not an expert on construction law, and uh, I wouldn't like to say something more than the mayor. But in my simple logic, uh, if there was an obligation by the archbishop to do something and he has failed in doing it, what is the guarantee that in the new obligation that he will undertake, he will actually honor it? That is my problem. And I think the only practical way to get the four buildings restored is to force the stoppage of the building in relation to the church. And therefore, people will start taking note of the wrong they have done. Otherwise, they will simply leave it there and six, 12 months down the road, they will say, oh, it's a, an atrocious ruin. Let's clean it up and people will forget. So I think the importance of this exercise, because to my mind there has been a wrong, is to stop all action on the building plot, on the project, and by doing so, force them to restore the four buildings. Only when the four buildings are restored should they be allowed to continue work on the church. That way, you are clear that the listed buildings will be restored and they go ahead with the permit that was issued at some point in time. And the point that the mayor made about the length of time it would take the courts to deal with this, what about that? Is there any fast track? Of course there is a fast track. It's called a preliminary injunction. And it's a quick procedure. It's actually a procedure that is exempted from the provisions of the lockdown that we have. The courts still deal with such cases, and there are two legs on which one can stand. One are the general uh, terms of the building permit, which I understand the development had a whole plan, and part of the plan was knocked down. And the second, where one can look for actual sanctions, is what is the liability of the person who knocked down the building without a permit to do so? And this is independent of the permit to uh, develop the area. If you want to knock down a house, let alone a listed house, which is not allowed, you need a permit. There was no permit. Therefore, there is most likely criminal liability. That criminal liability first attaches to the person that was operating the digger that knocked it down. And then it goes on to whoever employed him and whoever gave him the contract. That's how you analyze it. 
And I, I don't see why a criminal uh, investigation file has not been generated by the police to deal with this crime. So if the police did go ahead and open a criminal investigation, then it ends up in court. Once again, we're talking about how long it takes. You say this can be done very quickly, at least well, until an agreement is made and things are put right again. No, but perhaps let me explain, because I think I have confused you and uh, your listeners. There are two procedures. One is the building permit, and the other is the permit to knock down a building. Knocking down the building without a permit is a criminal offence that is unrelated to an injunction because the building is already knocked down. So the injunction is in relation to a failure to carry out the work in according with the planning permit or the building permit. That's the one you get an injunction. You get this injunction in the civil court. Uh, you say this is an urgent matter because these people are going ahead. They're knocking down part of it, which is in breach. We need this to be restored, and therefore everything freezes. And if everything freezes, then you sit down from a position of strength to deal with this matter. Now, what is the position from which they are negotiating? Yeah, it's all very straightforward, according to you, but it seems everybody's making it very, very complicated, and I'm not quite sure why. Well, I, I, I think the why is obvious. It's the persons that are involved, and it's the stakes that uh, one has to deal with. But the law does not make any discrimination. You knock down a building without a permit, you have to pay the price, and that is criminal liability. You don't follow the building permit, then they stop you and you abide by the building permit. The least they can do is restore the buildings. And if you really want to dig into this and you look at the gift that these buildings were the subject matter of by a Mr. Marathevdis, if I am not mistaken, uh, they were bequeathed to the church uh, so as to be a kindergarten or a workshop for the poor. And this was about 70 odd years ago. Uh, Mr. Haralambos Marathevdis, in memory of his wife Iphigenia, had uh, donated uh, some of these buildings. Well, this gift has not been uh, dealt with, and uh, I think there are more of these cases around, and perhaps it's a good time for people who have donated property to the church, the living relatives, should perhaps reconsider the matter, because in logic, and most likely in law, if you breach the terms of the gift, the gift should be revoked. Yes, it's interesting because I did look a little bit into that and my understanding was that the endowment was actually more to do with the Pancyprium Gymnasium. Well, uh, um, again, I haven't seen the document, so we're just speculating and I'm reading from the papers and, and the media. Uh, I think the position is that the property was bequeathed, that is correct. Uh, the executors of the will were the uh, archbishop or whoever is archbishop and whoever is the head of the Pancyprian Kendrigo Gymnasio. These were the two persons that were in charge. And apparently, these two persons do not seem to be doing what the gift said they should be doing. Because if the lady wanted it to be a kindergarten or a workshop for the poor of Nicosia, uh, then you see what I see in the newspaper today, I think it is far from it. That brings up another question, of course, as to how these endowments are managed, who sits on the committees, and how often do they meet? Because it seems well, to me that a lot of them question. don't meet for 20 years at a time. Yes, well, it used to be the case that the safe donation would be to give it to the church for the various religious and other feelings that people had. That doesn't seem to be the case anymore. People do trusts now. Uh, there are other mechanisms to deal with it. But I think there is quite a lot of room for investigation into this. I did some work on the Haji Gorkaji's Cornesios uh, house, where I am acting as one of the executors, and uh, it was given to the church for certain reasons. And there may be a question as to what they're planning to do. So, I, again, there is something that has been there for some time. This has brought it up to the surface, and I think we should be doing good by examining these and trying to find out 
what can or cannot be done with all these properties that the church apparently is administering or maladministering, as the case may be. And, of course, properties which are very much part of the whole heritage of Cyprus and important, I think, to every citizen. Achilleas, always a pleasure talking to you. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you very much. Well, that about wraps up this edition of the Cyprus News Digest. Many thanks for your company. Hope you'll join me next week. Till we meet again, take care and God bless. Bye-bye now.